Man, all I know is I'm going to need to drink this entire Red Bull right now. All right, I'm ready to code. Okay, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to I'm going to show you how to implement this animation right here. You see? So my Apple Watch is telling me to stand, but F that idea. So basically, when we click this, you can see it kind of springs backwards, right? I can't make it any bigger than this since the simulator is not able to be bigger. But basically, you can see it kind of has that, kind of has that spring animation. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And then I'm going to upload a couple more videos today on more animation types. This video is specifically spring animations. And uh, the next couple are going to be like CA layer animations and stuff like that. But for this video, spring animations, it's not a series. And uh, yeah, let's jump into it. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to open up a new Xcode project. So let's see. Uh, I just don't want to open up Xcode because I have all my code there that I just wrote for this video. But basically what we're going to do is hit command shift new on Xcode, create a new Xcode project. And I'm just going to call this animations for y'all. <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm not in the South. I'm just saying y'all for whatever reason. All right. So basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into view controller.swift and it's already boosted up because I just recorded some Udemy content. And I uploaded a bonus section over on my UI table view course, which you can take right now. If you want to take that course, it's down in the description. I would appreciate the support and I'll teach you how to code in exchange, right? Super cool stuff. So anyway, don't want to plug that it just came off the top of my head. But now that I think about it, I'm going to plug it in my next videos. But anyway, what we're going to do in this video is this animation. So let's go ahead and start by first getting a button on the screen. So what I want you to do is I want you to create a button. So we'll say let button is equal to UI button. And then we'll say button dot translates auto resizing mask into constraints is false. Now, the reason we're doing this is so that we can use programmatic auto layout and not use nasty frames or storyboards or any of that nasty junk, right? So let's go ahead and let's set that and then let's put it on our sub view. So we'll say view dot add sub view button. Now, if we do this, it's obviously not going to show anything because we haven't given it a background color or anything. So let's quickly just get a background color on there, a corner radius and some text. These are all simple things and this video is on animations. So I'm going to hustle through it. Feel free to pause when I'm done writing this and then write it in. Okay. So I'm going to say button dot layer dot corner radius. Are you freaking kidding me? Why did it choose to connect to my phone? I'm trying to be quick here. iPhone XR. That's so annoying. Like, I don't think I've ever been more annoyed. I've been getting annoyed lately. All right. Corner radius is equal to 12 button dot layer dot not layer, but button dot background color is equal to. Now, here's something that really pisses me off. I always, I use this app called color note and it's off the screen, but basically it's, um, I'll take a screenshot and drag it on the screen. But basically what this app is, is it gives, and this isn't a plug in the slightest. I'm just showing you what I use. I just took the screenshot on my screen. I have a wide screen, so a little bit of it's cut off. But basically you can see that I have these like hex codes and I wanna use this like color for for uh, whatever that is, that blue, cause it's like that nice blue right there. And what's irritating is that it gives you the hex code and then you, Apple doesn't have a hex thing by default in Swift, which is freaking annoying. So I'll make a video and upload it on how to create a custom hex initializer for UI color. And that's gonna be on the channel. Just search my channel if you're looking for that and hopefully it's up by the time you're watching this. All right, anyway, what we're gonna do is, I'm, I'm just gonna guess, I think it was like 48. So we're gonna say UI color dot init and then I'm gonna choose this one with red, green, blue, and I'm gonna say like 48 over 255. And then now I'm gonna look in my old, my project that I was just opened in. This is the completed code. I mean like some, I've always thought, okay, I don't wanna show them the completed code, but now when I think about it, it doesn't really matter. Like I'm still gonna show you how to code. And obviously I wrote the program before. So I, there's no harm in showing you that I've done it already. 155, 255. Anyway, what we're gonna do is say 155 over 255, Freak, I already forgot it. I already forgot the other one. 250, oh, just 255. That was an easy one to remember too. All right, 255 over 255 and we're good, okay? So that's gonna give us our blue color. I said I was gonna do this all quick, but I guess I'm just... So what we're gonna do is we are going to say back or button dot 
dot set dot yeah set title and this is going to be the what's goody button what's goody guys i hope i said that at the beginning of this video and then we're going to say for dot normal and then we're going to not compile it because it's not really going to show anything because we haven't really added it to the or we haven't set some constraints so let's set those now let's say button dot left anchor dot constraint i'm just going to show you with an array so we're going to say var constraints is equal to an array and then in this array we're going to say button dot top anchor or we'll say bottom anchor dot constraint is equal to and we'll say view dot bottom anchor and then we'll say we're going to pull it up negative about 80 pixels dot and then we're going to put a comma instead of dot is active and then what we're going to do i'm going to pull this to the side a bit so that you can see a bit better we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it a few times and we're just going to say like center x anchor to center it in the middle of the screen center x anchor get rid of the constant here and then i'm going to say uh what was it width anchor obviously is going to be have to be like some sort of constant so we'll say is equal to constant of 100 and then i'm going to copy that actually and just replace this one and i'm going to say height anchor is equal to 60 i believe is what i did and then if we compile that nothing's going to happen because we haven't activated these constraints let's first change this to a let because we are never going to change this so it can be a constant and I just don't want the warning. And we're just gonna say constraints.activate. Sorry, it's NS layout constraint dot activate. And you'll see it takes an array, so we can just pass in constraints there. So that's a another way of doing it. I think that they're both pretty easy. The dot is active method and the array method, they're pretty much the same. Except for, I guess you do have to write like an extra couple lines here because you have to have the let and then that and then that. Whereas just with dot is active, it'd just be on those four lines. But either way, let's make the width about 200 because that's that's too short. What die? What the? A sketch. All right, so that should be good. Now we can get into the animation side of things. And now that I think about it, I'll put a comment down below, just kind of getting you to this point saying that, okay, here is the part where we're actually doing the animations. All right, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and let's create a function. Let's say add Objective-C func and we'll say animate and we'll take in a view. Well, we'll take in a sender because that's how targets work and we'll say UI button. And then we're just gonna print what's goody guys. And I want to actually change this to the what's goody button. And I'm gonna say guys and gals, because I'm trying to include all y'all. Next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna put in, we're gonna have to call this. So we'll say button dot, what the junk? Button dot, and we'll say add target self, and we'll say selector self dot what's goody button. And then we'll say for control event dot, and we'll just say, Touch up inside. I'm okay. Honestly, the reason I'm like kind of like going slow right here is because I'm thinking, dang, should I like re record this? Because I'm kind of acting like an idiot. Some people are going to judge hard, it's, but it's whatever. All right, touch up inside. It's got to be inside, not side. Uh, all the capitals. All right, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and compile it, and we're going to see now that it works, and then we're going to hop into the animations, okay? While that's compiling, let's just write a function. Let's say file private func. It doesn't have to be file private, but it's a good practice. Like, we really should have put file private right here, too. Or mostly just private, because if you had another class in here, you still don't want to call this outside of it. But yeah, when we click that, it says, what's good, you guys and gals? What we want to do is say file private func, and then we'll just say animate view, and then we can say underscore so we don't have to pass in a basically a parameter title and we can just say view and then say ui view and then we're still going to say view let's say view to animate because we still want to be able to access this in here because if we don't give it anything if we don't give it any name and we can't use it in the function there's no really point in point passing it in a function because then you're not using it all right, so that's why we do that. But with that underscore, we don't. when we call this function, we don't have to give it a name. I'll show you what I mean. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna say view to animate. Well, first what we have to do is type in the spring animation, okay? So UI view.animate, 
and then I'm just gonna type in spring and it's gonna give us the method performs a view animation using a timing curve corresponding to the motion of a physical spring. So it kind of gives it a cool animation where it's kind of like bouncy. Hit return on that time interval. We're gonna say this is gonna take about 0.15 of a second. And then we're gonna say a third or half of a third of a second, so a sixth of a second. And then delay, no delay, spring with damping. Basically, if you say 0.1, it's gonna bounce more. And then if you say one, it's gonna be not bouncy, okay? So it's from 0.1 to, to one. And that's just what I found throughout using this. Correct me if I'm wrong. If, there, if you can use a number higher than one and there's a specific reason for it, please let me know or a negative number. And uh, I will update some more videos and throw some up here explaining this in depth, okay? So we're gonna say 0.2 and then we're gonna say initial spring velocity, just how hard it goes in. So if you have it at like 0.2 and then like 20, it's gonna go boing and bounce all over this junk, right? So we're just gonna say like 0.5 and then curve ease in for this, animations hit return on that and then completion. We're actually gonna fill that out and put an underscore there because we're not gonna use the bool because I don't even know why it's there. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say in here, we wanna change the transform. So we'll say button.transform is equal to CG affine transform oh not button but animate view to animate dot transform oh my gosh transform i got it all right is equal to cg affine transform what the where'd that come from cg affine transform and then we're going to choose the scale x we're just gonna say 0.92 0.92 and then we're going to just print on completion and we're going to say uh, animation complete. Okay. Now the reason I'm doing this completion is because you'll notice when we run this animation, it's going to bounce, but it's not going to bounce back. It's not going to look very good. So I'm going to show you how we can basically animate it again in there to get it to bounce back. So let me show you what I mean. Click on that. Oh, we still have to call it. And I was just thinking we had to do that because I told you I'll explain this when we get to it, just like I did there, just like I did with that. And then I remembered I never did. So anyway, what we need to do is in what's goody guys and gals, what we need to do is we need to say self.animate view. And then we need to pass in that sender, the UI button on line 34 here. And then now that's gonna allow us to animate it. Notice how we don't have to pass in a title because I put that underscore. If I got rid of this underscore and I saved it, you'll see that it gets an error and it requires us to put in view to animate there as a parameter. I want to show you freaking now i want the error and it's not showing it all right but basically it would require you to do that i'll show you in a second but basically you can see here when we click the animation it completes it i'll compile it and show you the error now all right see it says missing argument label so basically you can either do that or you can do none and put an underscore there just another tip okay but basically when we compile this you're gonna see that i'll open it up right here because we've already compiled it. Uh, it's going to be me. All right. So basically, when we click this button, it's going to go there. You see it animates there, but it doesn't come back. So we need to basically call another animation inside of animate complete, cut that out. And let's just say, I would copy the whole thing, but I don't want the completion in it. So we'll say UI view dot animate. And then I'll choose that. And I'll say with duration 0.15 delay zero. And then let's just use like spring with damping point four, I guess, and then spring velocity two. So it's gonna bounce, even though it's less less spring, it's going to, well, it's more, but it's gonna spring less because it's a higher value. I don't know why it works that way. Like I've still yet to understand why the numbers are the way they are. Like I know how to use it. I just don't understand why. All right, so options, these are gonna be curvies in animations. We're just gonna say, we're gonna take it back to one. So we'll copy that, put it there. And then we'll just put this to one and one and it's gonna animate back, hit tab. And then on completion, we're just gonna say nil because we don't want a completion handler. Now you could add in even another callback to another animation, but even with this method and doing that, it gets really performance bad. Like it's just really bad for performance because you have like a completion handler and it's like calling another method and it's like, okay, at least it's not a for loop, right? But basically we just don't want like all these animations running over and over again. Like it's not too bad. And I guess you could use this for very specific things, but you'll see now that we're done and you can modify these values to do what you want it to do. Like I'll change this spring with damping to like five and then I'll change this to like 0.5 and then I'll change this to like 0.3 duration. You're gonna see it's a lot more smooth or something. And then it's gonna snap back again right there. But basically, um, I forgot what I was talking about. Um, yeah, so more animations, right? 
if you want to learn more efficient ways or different ways of doing animations, I'm going to upload a few more videos. And by the time I submit this, uh, a few of you are going to be watching this before the video's up because I'm literally going to publish this and then I'm going to start recording the next one. But there should, like later today, uh, it's February 27th, Wednesday, 3.06 p.m., Basically, they're going to be up by like 6 p.m. or something, okay? So keep your eye out for that. That's how you do animations. And again, go ahead and please get the courses down below. Obviously, you don't have to, but like if you want more content by me, there it's down there. I just added a bonus section to the UI table view course, and I'm making an animation course here in a second. So I'll keep you all posted. See you in just a second. Or this isn't a course. I'll see you next time.